Roger, you uh, mentioned this yesterday. How tough was it playing 14 straight weeks? I mean, you lost your bye week with the COVID outbreak uh, in October. And how much, uh, and obviously you don't want to point fingers or use excuses, but right. that had to take a toll in, in such a unique season. Uh, absolutely. It, uh, it really does take a toll. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just like you said, we don't want to make any type of excuses. Um, this team, really, they just kind of attack every challenge and use it as an opportunity. So that's kind of how we were treating everything. But we uh, we can't be ignorant to the fact that it did play a factor because of just the constant week in and week out of playing uh, uh, throughout the season. You know, you start to you start to lose a little steam at the end of the season, which we understand. But once again, just something that we didn't take an excuse for. Uh, Jim. Roger, what was the final team meeting like and what's kind of the overall feeling as, as you guys go your separate ways today? Um, the best way that I could describe it would be uh, appreciation and um, I would say just just like hunger. Uh, you know, everybody in there wanted more out of the season and of course we didn't get it and we fought like hell to get where we were. Um, battling through injuries and uh, a lot of other things, a lot of other factors. Guys had a lot of off the field issues, um, uh, it included me. I mean, you know, losing my sister, my father, uh, other teammates losing their brothers, uh, family members, friends. I mean, it was it was a tough year this year. So just to just to be able to get where we are, I think that we just really appreciate the fact that we're very supportive of one another and the fact that we played for each other. And uh, just just knowing that, you know, your 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 boys, your brothers, however you describe the team had your back. Um, and I think that we just had enough time last night and today to really think about how, how good that was for myself and, and my teammates. John Glenn. Roger, uh, I, I guess speaking of distractions, unfortunately, um, when was the last time you spoke with uh, Isaiah Wilson and and you know, where do you see things with him uh, as the sea, as the off season uh, begins? Uh, I haven't talked to Isaiah. I think I think it might have been right before he left. Uh, I haven't talked to him since then. But I mean, let's be real. I mean, uh, uh, being being a young athlete, um, there there are a lot of challenges that you go through, um, and. You, you can either handle it or you don't know how to handle it. And right now, the, the next decision for, for his future here, it all belongs to J-Rob, Coach Vrabel, um, and our staff. Uh, you know, we have a certain way that we do things here. We have a blue collar mentality where, you know, you work and everything that you get, you earn. So, uh, you know, sometimes the decision that you make, you have to live with the consequences. Uh, Joe. Sorry, you said Joe. I did. Joe Rex. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Hey, Roger, what, what, obviously Arthur Smith, uh, you know, interviewing with a lot of teams right now has a chance to be a head coach. Just wondering how much credit, you know, do you give him for, for the full product of the offense? What you guys were able to do the last couple of years. And if, uh, if he does move on, how difficult will it be to replace him? Uh, honestly, uh, with with Arthur, Arthur deserves everything that he gets. He's done a fantastic job being a motivator, um, an instructor with teaching everybody the offense and teaching the way that needs to be played. Uh, he's been boisterous. Um, you know, he, he really deserves everything that he gets. And it, it's definitely going to be a big loss to his team to lose him. But, um, you know, he was always teaching us about the growth mindset. So why would we limit his growth because of our own uh, selfish desires? Um, so I hope that he does get a head coaching job somewhere. I think that he deserves that. I think that's the next step in his evolution as a coach. And uh, I couldn't be more prouder to, to be able to be uh, one of his players underneath his offense. Um, but at the end of the day, like the players have to be the ones to make the plays and regardless of, of who our offensive coordinator is, we need to make sure that we do our job. And, uh, you know, that's that's all of the will of the players. Um, 
you know, the tenacity, the, the work ethic, all that stems from us. So we have to do that regardless. Um, but once again, uh, you know, losing, losing Arthur would be a huge hit, but I want him to get a head coaching job. I just feel like he deserves it. Paul. I missed the very beginning, Roger, forgive me if I'm repeating myself and tell me if I am uh, repeating the question, uh, how difficult for you personally to slog through, uh, the toe and the other ailments you had this year and uh, how proud maybe are you of what you were able to do despite those things? Um, well, you haven't repeated anything, so that's good. Uh, the, 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 the one thing that I would say is that it, it was extremely tough to come in week in, week out. Um, there was uh, some self-loathing in there. Just like, how could this happen out of nowhere, especially with the toe situation? That was just kind of like a freak situation. Um, but I think it just kind of describes just what I feel like the, the, the character and the environment that we have on the team allows us to want to go out there week in and week out and, and want to fight for each other and, and make these things happen. Um, you know, aside from the injuries, you know, the loss of my family members, the, the, the other situations going on out, outside of the game, you know, that culmination could, could drive you into a panic, um, neg you know, just thinking negatively. Uh, but for me, I think that I've grown a lot just as a man and as a player, having all these adversities happen to me at the same time. Uh, Terry? Roger, when the dust settles and you look back on this season, how appreciative will you be of having blocked for a 2,000-yard rusher in Derrick? Um, I, I am extremely, extremely happy about that. I mean, we're, we're historic. This team has two 2000 yard rushers. Um, but you know, um, I, I just want to say that our whole model of never satisfied was not just a model for the playoffs. It, it was the way that we approach everything. And if you talk to Derek today, he would tell you that he wants to beat that number next year. You know, that's something that we're constantly trying to uh, really push towards because we, we understand the, the type of talent that we have back there. So we're always trying to be greater. And uh, even with the 2000 yard rush, I think that we're wanting more. But I am uh, truly blessed to be a part of this organization to have uh, this type of rushing season. Uh, Chris Harris. Sorry, you got mine. That was about Arthur. Okay. Uh, Steve Lammer. Hey, Roger. You mentioned all the things that this team has battled through. Last year, the disappointment stung because you were one win away from playing for it all in the Super Bowl. Then you go through everything of this surreal season, and you have a 2,000-yard rusher, and you win an AFC South title, but yet – you're one and done in the playoffs. Is this day similar in the feeling of last year? Is it different? Is there some satisfaction because of all you went through? Can you describe just those feelings? Um, well, I'm, I'm sure that you guys have already talked to Coach Rabel, and I think that he said it best when there's going to be 31 teams that are having the same day that we had. I feel exactly the same when I lost the Super Bowl. I feel exactly the same when I lost the AFC Championship game. Is it's not a good feeling whatsoever, um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's going to be 31 other teams that feel like this, and it's it's going to suck. Um, but the one thing that I can say is I'm going to use this time to get healthy, to get back into my craft, and to just really take advantage of all the time that I won't be in the facility, so that I can be the best version of myself for the team later. Um, I think that the whole team feels that way. And I think that that allows us to, to turn into a pretty dangerous team next year. Uh, last one, David Beauclerc. Roger, you, you talk about the injuries, but you were out there almost every week uh, with uh, with three different left tackles uh, along the way. Did it did it make a difference how you played? Who was, who was to your left there? Uh, I think that I really found my calling through just being able to be uh, a better communicator and uh, more of a leader. Um, to guys that necessarily weren't preparing for uh, the left tackle job. And, you know, through working with Ty and David and Taylor, 
I think that I understand that like, as long as I can make the best possible situation for any one of those guys out there, we're going to be able to, to make plays. We're going to be able to have great blocks. We're going to be able to pass off twists and games. Uh, it just all comes from the communication. And I'm just glad that I had the opportunity to see that uh, because I think that it's going to make me and Taylor work better together when we come back next year.